Yes, indeed, and I'm talking about you and me, and I'm hoping you'll come back to me. And I'm lonely as I can be, and I'm praying for your well company, and I'm hoping you'll come back to me. What you gonna do when the well runs dry? You gonna run far away and hide. I'm gonna be right by your side. You pretty baby, I wouldn't even die. Walk. Yes, indeed, now I'm talking about how you and me, and I'm hoping you'll come back to me.
well runs dry You're gonna run far away and hide I'm gonna be right by your side You pretty baby, I would even die Walking, yes indeed And I'm talking about you and me And I'm hoping you'll come back to me Get walking I'm happy, sometimes I'm blue, my disposition depends on you, I never mind the rain from the sky, especially when I see the sun in your eyes, sometimes I hate you, sometimes I love you. But when I hate you, it's cause I love you, that's how I am, so what can I do, I'm happy when I'm, 
I'm happy when I, I am happy when I'm with you. Hey everybody, well I'm very happy and I'm very happy that you are here with us this evening here in lovely sunny Rancho Mirage, California where it's uh, up in triple digits, which means I'm smoking indoors again, folks. Actually, what it really means is I'm not smoking until later on tonight. And speaking of smoking, our Cigar of the Week is none other than the Padron Anniversario number four. Very hard to find, but when you do enjoy it, it is a monster of a cigar and one of my favorites. This one coming to us fresh off the boat from Mirage Cigar Stores right here in Rancho Mirage, California. And while we're talking about cigar stores, I want to make a big shout out to our pals up in San Francisco. Dan Arroyo and the gang are up there at the University Club of San Francisco, where they have a fantastic deck, very cigar friendly. In fact, they sell cigars there. And a uh, great group of people. Uh, and I miss you guys up there. So I hope you guys are doing well, staying safe, and uh, I hope you haven't burnt the building down yet. Also, a big shout out, of course, to my two favorite cigar stores in Washington State, which is the Church Own Room in the east side, and of course, the Vertigo Club on the west side. And um, I'm betting not too many terrorists are getting in there and messing that place up. Those guys are pretty well armed. Anyway, what else do we have to talk about? Uh, one of our sponsors, of course, is Benedetto Cigars. Guitars, I'm sorry, I'm getting my cigars, guitars. Hey, honey, can we show them a little bit of Benedetto? We have a wonderful little, uh, there it is, the Benedetto Signature all the way from our pal Howard Paul and his group of people out there in Savannah, Georgia. We hope you guys are well too in Savannah. It's gotta be getting warm out there in beautiful Savannah, Georgia. And if you get a chance, you guys should check out Benedetto Guitars. It is uh, by far the best guitar I've ever had the chance to play in. What else do we have to talk about? Uh, our donations, we have a donation uh, jar that you can uh, tip jar, I guess they call it, on uh, the front page here. Uh, Never expected, but always appreciated. We're going to uh, talk about a couple of things tonight, but right now I'm going to do another tune for you. These are my sort of uh, tunes I learned when I was a youth, and I never get a chance to play them much. They're not quite part of the American vocabulary all the time in jazz, but some of my favorite songs. This one made famous by the great Nat King Cole. Save all the answers You found her at last But now you're a part of a session That's moving too fast She'll hold your hand But don't try to reach for the sky You'll understand as soon as the evening goes by, she wears my ring on her finger. She'll never linger. But, but you're dead. But just like I said, don't let it go to your head.
bet you'll flirt But don't let it go to your head You might get hurt But don't let it go to your head She doesn't ask any questions Save all the answers You found her at last But now you're a part of a session that's moving too fast She'll hold your hand But don't try to reach for the sky You'll understand As soon as the evening goes by She wears my ring on her finger She'll never linger So brother you're dead like I said, don't let it go to your head. I said, I'm her guy. It's time to confess. You just missed the boat to happiness. So just like I said, don't let it go to your head. True story, by the way. Anyway. It's one of my favorite tunes, Don't Let It Go To Your Head. So, it is time to bring on the program here. I've got one of my dear friends and absolutely one of the most talented people in music out there. He has, he's an eight-time Grammy Award winner. He's got an Emmy nominee, and he is Latin Grammy Producer of the Year. He's one of the most diverse and highly sought-after musicians in the industry right now. Uh, he's worked with everybody, including Placido Domingo, Michael Buble, Pharrell Williams, Barbara Streisand, Stevie Wonder. Listen, this guy started his career at 24 years of age playing for Count Basie. Left Count Basie and went and toured with Ella Fitzgerald. Left Ella Fitzgerald and went and toured with Sinatra. In fact, we've got some pictures. Honey, let's show us a picture of this handsome gentleman when he was out there with the big boss, the chairman. You can see back there, look at that hair. He's in the drum kit back there. What else we got there? There, oh, there's, a better, there's a better shot of him there. Absolutely, yeah. He's produced Stevie Wonder, Mark O'Connor, Gloria Estevan, Jeff Beck, Herbie Hancock, Arturo Sandoval. In fact, I was lucky enough to get the call and be on a record with uh, Greg, um, with the Arturo Sandoval record that won numerous Grammys and Latin Grammys. And now he's working on a new record that we're going to get to talk about, but I want to bring him on board with this here. Everybody say hello to the one and only, the great Greg Field. Greg, let me hey. put the headphones on so I can hear you. Can you hear me? Today's technological world. Can you hear me all right? I can hear you great, man. Wonderful. Well, welcome and thanks for, for being here. My pleasure. Man, I was just looking at your 23-page bio, and I was trying to cut it up here. To figure out some of the stuff how, how was it when you did seals he did you did seal standards records right i did yeah what was that like well it was surprising actually because he um turns out he's a big sinatra fan so he he can actually swing he knew what to do with the material wow. and um chris walden uh actually brought me in on it uh i didn't produce it i just played actually i did produce a little bit of it some of the vocals but uh, i was there basically just if not playing you drum. should be <laughs> um, you know, it's funny, it's, he would kind of blow a line once in a while. And you know, these are standards that you and I know backwards. And, you know, I would lean into the microphone in the drum booth and say, hey, CEO, it's not this, it's that. And he would he'd have a laugh about it. He was a great guy. It was a lot of fun. I bet, I bet. I bet. And uh, I kind of, kind of mentioned it, but you know, uh, your record with uh, Arturo, Dear Diz, that, uh, Garnered, oh, was it three Latin Grammys? Um, it got five nominations and it won three of them, yeah. Whew. Man. That was a good night. It was a good night, I bet. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it was a great album. Well, well you played on it. I mean, you know, it was funny. And yet, we, uh, and yet it was still a great album. <laughs> uh, humility will get you nowhere around here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, I mean, it was really complex music. Gordon Goodwin wrote uh, most of the arrangements. Shelley Berg wrote 
a couple. Chris Walton wrote a couple. Uh, but Gordon, yeah, and Dan Higgins wrote a couple. I mean, they were all really tough, especially Gordon Goodwin's arrangements. You know, they're they're always uh, challenging, and and you killed it. killed it. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, we um, uh, tell me about uh, the new project. I want to actually. I know what I want to talk about. I want to talk about our LCD. Oh, man. Can we show a picture of that, sweetheart? We've got uh, the new LCD. We've been kind of talking about it on on the show here for a while, but, um, yeah, this is when we can really kind of put in a good word for it. Maybe you can talk to people through, Greg, uh, some of the stuff you went through to kind of get that project off the ground because it was – monumental it really was monumental um you know ella was discovered at the apollo theater amateur contest in november of 1934 she was 17 and uh we were coming up on the 100th birthday um i had produced her 90th birthday for as a pbs special and uh, a friend of mine turns out was on the board of the apollo theater and uh, i asked her i said what's the apollo doing for the 100th birthday had they didn't have any plans at that point, it was pretty, still pretty far away. And um, I met with their new executive director, Camila Forbes, and um, we hit it off and uh, that led to, uh, they asked me to produce it. And um, it was, it was mind blowing actually. You know, we had Patty Austin and David Allen Greer <clears throat> co-hosting. I didn't know David Allen Greer could sing. And Neither did most- I. Yeah, I mean, you know, most people know him from In Living Color, and you recognize him as a great comedian. But he had he had just come off Broadway starring as uh, Porgy, I mean, Sport and Life and Porgy and Best. And I heard, you know, some YouTube performances from that show, and the guy was amazing. So the two of them hosted it, and then we had um, Cassandra Wilson, Liz Wright, um, Monica Mancini, uh, Lettucey. I'm probably leaving people out. I'm sorry. We had this great young uh, acapella group from Howard University, Afro Blue, Afro Blue, and yeah. and Count Basie's band as the as the core band with uh, with 30 strings, and then the we recreated the Ella All Star Quartet with you, of course, and playing guitar, uh, Nathan East and Shelley Berg and I, and uh, so we basically in this evening we tried to cover all aspects of Ella's career from the beginning with Chick Webb and the, that old big band music, uh, right through to the duets with Sinatra and Louis Armstrong. Um, and then, you know, she, t- she toured from probably the mid fifties till the end with, uh, with her own quartet with Joe Pass. And when I was there with Paul Smith and Keeter Betts. So we wanted to recreate, uh, some of that as well. And it was just, Brian, you know, you were there. It was one of the greatest nights I've ever experienced, and thank God we recorded it. And the album's just out. It's been out about two weeks now. Well, listen, I have, um, <clears throat> I took a t- one of the tunes that uh, Monica and I had done as a duet, and I had some um, some pictures that we had taken during the oh. um, the rehearsals, uh, the, day mm-hmm. be- the day of, I guess it was, and uh, day before and day of. Mm-hmm. And I put a little montage. I'd love to show it to them if it's okay with you. Oh, yeah. You know, I'll give you a little setup on that song. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you know, if when you want to do a tribute concert, if all you accomplish is having some really great singers come up and sing songs associated with the person you're honoring, you, you kind of miss out on an opportunity for the audience to learn more about who you're celebrating. So in the case of Patty Austin and and Monica, they both knew Ella personally. And Monica knew um, Ella through her dad, Henry Mancini. So when she talked about um, Ella, you know, she was speaking first person. And, you know, the Ella um, that I knew and I worked with, she was a really humble woman. And she literally used to ask, say once in a while, I wonder if anybody will ever remember me, as, as amazing as that is. And um, so we saved this toward the end of the concert. And um, I wanted to recreate those great duets between Ella and Joe Pass, and who better than you, you know, the, the heir apparent Joe Pass. And in case people watching don't know, uh, Brian Nova was a 
protege uh, of Joe. Um, so it was a perfect moment to have Monica and, and Brian do this. So yeah, listen, I'd love to hear it. All right, so here it is. This is uh, from the new CD that's coming out, Ella 100, from, live from the Apollo. And this is a beautiful tune with the wonderful Miss Monica Mancini and yours truly doing Once in a While. Take a listen. There it is. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Great, 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 great. 
Wow. Wow, that was quite a night. I remember that night like it was yesterday. You know, uh, what was really a trip, Brian, is is when uh, you and I were walking up to the theater and, and we saw our names on the Apollo uh, oh, marquee. <laughs> that was unbelievable. Yeah, man, it, it was, you know, it was very emotional for everybody that, that was there that night, the whole the whole concert. Uh, you know, we almost didn't record it. It was really the last minute that um, the guys from Unity Music stepped in. It was expensive to record there. And they stepped in and said, no, we got we got to get this thing uh, recorded. And wow. I got a call. There was a reviewer from Downbeat Magazine <clears throat> that was there that night. And he he wrote a real love letter for the review. And then he reached out to me and he said, you know, I've been going to live jazz concerts for 50 years. And that's the greatest thing I've ever seen. And <laughs> that's pretty much the takeaway. You know, what? what I, I've thought about why was that night as remarkable as it was. And a lot of it was... You know, if, as you know, if you're a musician and you're playing on the stage at Carnegie Hall or Royal Albert Hall or Hollywood Bowl, a Apollo Theater, it's these are such venerated um, music halls and, and venues that um, you're automatically going to play better. You're lifted by that environment. I agree. And then couple agree. that with the fact that we were standing five feet in front of... Uh, Five feet or ten feet in front of us was where Ella Fitzgerald sang for the first time, and all that energy hit us all. And um, you know, again, thank God we recorded it. No kidding, no kidding. It sounds beautiful. I think uh, anybody that gets this, you should just sit down, pour yourself a big bottle of scotch, uh, light up a cigar, and listen to it from beginning to end because it really is like being at the Apollo. Don't you agree? Yeah, it's a live record. So um, I've had a few people say to me, you know, think of it like a like a film. You wouldn't stop and start a film if you don't have to. So yeah, take Brian's advice, pour something to sip on, turn off the phone and listen to it from top to bottom. And after about 10 minutes, you'll feel like you're in the theater with us. It's, it's mm -hmm. remarkable. Yeah. You know, something else I want to talk about too is this new album you're working on with uh, Jonathan Antone. Did I say that right? Antoine. Antoine. Ant hmm? uh, well, that album is also just out um, on, on Sony Masterworks. Uh, about two years ago, Placido Domingo uh, had come across this great young British tenor um, and told me about him. And I met with him, and we, we decided to make a record. And... Um, He's an amazing young man. He's um, he's now 25. He was 24 when we made the record. Um, but he was on, you, some of you might recognize him from the cover. He was on Britain's Got Talent when he was 17. And it was one of those things sort of like Susan Boyle where, you know, he walked out, he was wearing, he was in high school, he was wearing kind of a dumpy t-shirt and, and he opens his mouth and everybody was stunned. And Simon Cowell infamously said, uh, he was out there with this young girl named Charlotte, who was also his high school buddy, and they both came out and sang. And Simon said, um, you know, you can sing, she can't, get rid of her. Um, but they stayed together uh, for a while. The problem was that Jonathan was horribly bullied when he was in junior high school and high school because of his weight. Um, and then subsequently, when he got on Britain's Got Talent at 17, you can imagine those people that want to be mean on social media really let him have it. And it was really tough for him. He had a really tough um, growing up. So the young man that I met um, had been through the fire, and mm. we decided to make this really large-scale record. I mean, it's the Ralph Philharmonic Orchestra. We did it at, um, at Abbey Road and at Air Studios in London. And... I called Diane Warren and I said, you know, we really need a song that talks about Jonathan's journey from being this horribly bullied young man, kid, to the young man that he is now. And knowing what he knows now, what would he say to the 13 or 14 or 17 year old uh, kid that he was? Mm -hmm. So Diane wrote this incredible song called Compass, I Will Lead You Home. And, um, it's the first single from the record, and it comes out in the UK and in Europe in about a week, and it's been out here for about uh, about two weeks. 
It's a great, anyway, he's a great singer. Um, in addition to doing some popular material, he also, he's a, he's a real operatic tenor, not a guy that's sort of a popper guy. He's, he's the real deal. And he wanted to record Nessun Dorma. And I tried to dissuade him from doing it because everybody and their brother's done it. Yeah. Uh, but he insisted. And he said, no, I want to do it. It's everybody's favorite aria. And so there's a small section in that song where, the, where there's a choir. And I called my buddy Grant Gershon, who's the uh, director of the uh, L.A. Master Chorale and the L.A. Opera Chorale, and asked him if he would put the, the choir together for that and conduct it. And he did. And he wrote Jonathan the most beautiful personal note. And he said, you know, short of Pavarotti, this is probably the greatest performance I've ever heard. So it, it, it's, it's quite amazing what this guy can do. But anyway, so this tune Compass was the first single. And, um, and it, it, it's this guy having this massive voice, you know, tackling some popular music, some Diane Warren music. It's great. Oh, it's great. So we do have a video of that. But, and uh, let me show it. Interrupt you for one second. No, it's okay. Chris, our, our buddy, the incredible arranger, um, Chris Walden, um, who arranged the entire album and also conducted it. And uh, this is his arrangement of Diane's song. And I think that's you playing drums back there too, as well, right? Uh, it's me programming some very nice drums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. All right. Well, that's listen. True. Here is uh, here's uh, Jonathan Antoine singing Compass. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that, and he's the loveliest young guy. I mean, it's just his singing is, is stunning. Um, and you know, he's channeled all of that, that rough childhood into, uh, comes out in his music and now it's, uh, it, it's, it's helping him. That video is from um, his PBS special, which ran for about the last two months uh it's going to air again in december for the pledge season and uh by the way that that was chris conducting walden and that's shelly bird playing piano if you noticed him there yeah i did notice that that's amazing yeah where were you <laughs> where was i yeah i was probably uh i don't know i could be there next time you let me know i'll be there i'll uh i'll fire up you the got it. i'll start paddling now <laughs> yeah hey what's next on your list what else you got coming up um album wise um i've just finished a record that i'm really excited about it's it's a bit of a niche record but i did it in in madrid and it's um it's a mashup of flamenco um african and moruno uh arabic um music leaning heavily on flamenco and we did it with the musicians from paco de lucia uh, amazing record. The artist is a guy named Herman Lopez from the Canary Islands, and they've got this little instrument called a timple, mm -hmm. and it's somewhere between the size of a ukulele and a guitar. It's five strings. Uh, it's a folk instrument from the Canaries, and um, we made this crazy fun record, so that's just finished. And um, and mixing um, Lettuce's uh, upcoming PBS special right now. We did a tribute to Nina Simone. Oh, man, it's going to be great. Yeah. We did that at the Apollo, actually, in 2018, and uh, the f good folks at PBS decided it would make a good PBS special. So that's got to finish that, and that'll come out in uh, December for a uh, pledge. Just in time for Christmas. Just in time for Christmas. <laughs> well, listen, Greg, thank you so much. It was great having you Oh, man, you are you here. By the way, you didn't ask, but... Soon as, as soon as we finish, can you can you see that? Oh yeah, Romeo and Julieta. Yeah. Beautiful. So, well, and I, I will be joining you as well. Uh, we'll 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 be brothers in smoke and arms here uh, <laughs> out back. <laughs> hey, brother, I want to give her love to Monica. I absolutely will. I, I want to leave you with one thing. Sure. Um, you know, uh, with with all the craziness that we've been going through not only with with covid but with uh the with uh, george floyd um you know i want to tell you about work, working at the apollo theater the apollo theater is it's it's ground zero for african-american culture 
But that little slice of heaven, the Apollo Theater on 125th Street, is where we all want to be when when we th figure things out. Because, you know, you go there, and I've been lucky enough to produce three concerts there. And, you know, they don't care what color you are. You come there, and you're there to celebrate African-American culture. And I'll tell you, it is, it's what we should all be shooting for. I agree. You know, that, I agree. Man, yeah. it's just incredible. And it you leave there feeling so good, like, you know, everybody's finally got it figured out. And um, there's hope. hope. Comes from man, there is hope. I'm telling you. That's what is, I feel like when I left there. There's hope. Absolutely. So anyway, great to see you, Brian. Thanks, you everybody too, that's Greg. watching. And uh, go out and get Elda 100 live at the Apollo. There or you stream go. it. Your favorite uh, beverage. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Take care of yourself. All right. Bye. Bye, Brian. And I've got a little special for you right now. Uh, Greg and our dear friend Terry Miller, the great Terry Miller bass player, we put together a little trio record that I'd like to play for you right now. So uh, check it out. Here we go, boys. Ready? Two, three. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, be. All right, all right, all right. Well, that was, uh, of course, the one and only Mr. Greg Field on the drums um, from uh, Greg Field Studios in Los Angeles, California. And uh, my dear pal, Terry Miller, my brother in crime, uh, who was supposed to be here with us but couldn't make it today. We're going to have him on next week. He'll be joining the fray next week. Uh, but I've got another video I want to lay on you guys that Terry and I had done earlier, and uh, it's a lot of fun. It's just a nice little duet with, uh, with my pal Terry and I doing um, a great song called I Wish You Love. Check it out. All right, Terry, you ready? I am ready, sir. Goodbye. No use leading with our chins. This is where our story ends. Never lovers, ever friends. Goodbye. Let us call it a day. But before you walk away, I sincerely want to say I wish you bluebirds in the spring to give your heart a song to sing and then a kiss but more than this I wish you love and in July
Terry Miller, Terry Miller. Well, listen, folks, uh, it's getting down to the end of it here. Uh, next week is going to be a great week. Uh, I've got all the way from Seattle, Washington, uh, one of the top trumpeters in the nation. He runs the Harry James organization, the Harry James Band. Fred Radke is going to be here with us next week. He is also probably one of the best dressed musicians out there. So, uh, and speaking of best dress, I've got one of my dear pals and one of the best top of the line uh, clothiers uh, on the West Coast, Mr. Randy Willard from uh, Randy Willard, Willard Fashions will be joining us. And uh, he's got some great stuff coming up here for the summer. And just because we're social distancing doesn't mean we don't have to dress up just a little bit, add a little romance and spice to the evening. Uh, what else we have next week? Uh, of course, Terry Miller will be here with us next week, as well as Andy Fraga. And I have a very, very, very special uh, announcement. My lovely Masoni is going to join us next week for a song or two. So uh, you better tune in. Uh, what else we got to talk about? Nova for you. Quiet thoughts and quiet stars. Quiet chords from my guitar. and quiet dreams quiet thoughts and quiet streams
want to be here with you so close to me riding on life's embers I who was lost and lonely believing life was only a bit of tragic joke I found with you tone by the great Antonio Carlos Jobim. Anyway, our thanks tonight to, of course, my lovely Miss Sony, who is helping me keep this together and runs all the productions in the back, and she will be joining us in front of the camera next week. Uh, also, a big, big shout out and a big thanks to Greg Field for joining us here and all the wonderful projects he's working on. It's just, it's great to, great to have him, great to see him, and great to hear from him. Also, Terry Miller, thank you very much for joining us. We'll see Terry next week. Uh, big shout out again to Benedetto Cigar Guitars and the CRA, the Cigars of America. So we are uh, also pushing um, our cigars out here, folks. Uh, I want you all to make sure you stay safe out there and um, do the right thing. And I think the most important thing to remember right now is for all of us to be as kind and understanding of each other as we can. I mean, that's all one can ever ask for. So I look forward to seeing you next week and remember to uh, keep it swinging. Well, I'm walking Yes, indeed, and I'm talking about you and me, and I'm hoping you'll come back to me. And I'm lonely as I can be, and I'm praying for your well company, and I'm hoping you'll come back to me. What you gonna do when the well runs dry? You gonna run far away and hide? I'm gonna be right by your side You pretty baby, I wouldn't even die Walking, yes indeed Now I'm talking about how you and me And I'm hoping you'll come back to me 